Hello everyone. It's going to be a, doing an unboxing of the Motomaster Eliminator power inverter. Now I have an older one here. This one is quite old. It's a 400 watt, uh, but it's only rated for 300 continuous. And plus it's not a sine wave converter or inverter. So I was looking at some of the things I was hooking up and basically it says that they require a sine wave so I decided to uh, upgrade. I'll still use this. Decide to upgrade so let's uh, get this one out of the box, the new one here. And we'll unbox it plus I'll do a quick how to hook it up to a battery. From what I understand um, also the sine wave inverters are better for power like electrical motors, um, especially if it's a variable speed motor, they say that you should have a sine wave inverter. Well, okay, my first impression just getting it out of the box here. This is a pretty significant looking compared to my old my old one. This one's rated at uh, 1,000 continuous, uh, 2,000 watts uh, surge. So, there you have it. There's really not much in the box. Uh, the inverter, just for a comparison's sake. That's uh, it's a little bit different. Yeah, I'm surprised actually. I thought it would be like just a little bit bigger or maybe even the same size. Wow. <clears throat> All right, and it comes with a, uh, you know, standard, the manual. Tells you all the good stuff here. I'll read that through if there's anyth anything really significant. I'll tell you about it. And what does it else does it come with? I'm not sure what this is. Oh, that's, that's neat. It's uh, basically an on-off switch. It has a lot of cord. I don't know how long that is. It looks pretty long. But I guess this is so you can, you know, mount this on the wall somewhere and, you know, turn it on and off as required. Ah, huh, I like that. Could come in handy. Yeah, so as I said, continuous uh, out power output, 1,000 watts. Five minute AC power output, 1,100. Surge 2000 watts, so it puts out 115 volts and plus or minus 10 percent at 60 hertz. It has a USB output output power spot. Uh, yeah, there you go. So you can hook up USB items and it will charge them or you can operate them. There you have it. Okay, well, my first impression is, wow, this is a pretty big, pretty big unit compared to my old one. I'm just going to pause the video here and I'll get ready and I'll show you how to hook this thing up. Oh, basically, uh, before I do that, I have a couple of battery cables. These ones, depends on your type of battery. My battery has a top post mounting so I picked up the top post battery cable. Gonna need two of those. So I'll get these out of the box. I'll get a wrench and we'll hook this up. See what happens. Alright let's get this thing hooked up. Now there's some very important things to pay attention to here. First of all I, I took the, the cables out of the packaging. They come with these stickers. So positive and a negative. Now make sure nothing is hooked up to the battery at this point. Do not have these cables hooked up to the battery as you're doing this. So basically, let's take the first one. Let's do the uh, positive first. Now on here, take off this cover and it exposes the, uh, the terminal there. Take this because you want this on here after to protect that area. So anyways, Put that on. 
now. Let's get this uh, hooked up here. The uh, nuts and bolts are pretty standardized on cables. They're half inch. So you're going to need like a half inch, two half inch wrenches or a wrench and a socket. And I'll just show you why here. Let's start it on here. And make sure you put the wrench on the bottom here. Hold it nice in line. Uh, you don't have to overly tighten things. Just make sure they're nice and snug. There you go. So that's the first one on. This is the positive. And this piece, take it back. Slide it back up into place. There we go. And at this point, so we did the positive, get your sticker, stick it on the battery terminal here, so you know that that's the positive. There we go. Do not hook it up to the battery. Now, and again, just tighten her up. Be careful you're not torquing things around. Hold it in place. Put that cover back in place. And of course, get out your negative sticker. Now this doing this is really important, especially if you're installing in a vehicle or your boat or whatever. The next procedure here, once I get the sticker on, so there's, we're neg there's our negative. Okay, now this part's really important. Move the camera up here, especially if you're in a vehicle or in a boat or any time really. We're going to hook the terminals up here. Now. Make sure you're looking at the proper terminal because you want to hook up the positive first. And the reason is, if the positive goes on first and you don't touch anything, the negative cable can, you know, it can accidentally hit the side of your car or your boat and nothing's going to happen because it's the ground and that's normally the ground. Your vehicle chassis or your boat chassis uh, is the ground. Boats are a little bit different. I don't know too much about the boat grounding system, but they have a grounding system. So let's go ahead, hook up the positive first. Like I said, make sure again, it's positive, yep, has a little plus sign. So let's get that hooked up. Don't get crazy, just tap it down a little. Maybe till it's level there. Same procedure. Oh. I'll put these straight out. Same procedure. Make sure you don't touch anything with your socket. Because that would be bad news. Like if you're in a tight spot and there's any metal around and you're tightening this and it, you touch the frame of a vehicle, yeah, you're going to have a little bit of a problem. So be careful. And don't over tighten these things either. Just snug. Okay, so we're good to go. And let's get the negative on. That one slid right on. Um, same thing. Don't over tighten, it's only lead. It's not, you know, it's not high grade steel, so. All right, so it's hooked up. And the final thing is, which I'm not going to do right now, but I will. We'll go back down to the inverter. Now, if you're mounting this in a vehicle, it should be grounded to the frame of the vehicle. 
in a boat as I said I don't know too much about boats but they do have a grounding system if you're mounting this within your home you're gonna have to figure it out um, it really depends so I, I can't really tell you a straightforward answer I can give some ideas say you're mounting this in a shed and there's no power out there no grounding spot what you can do is use some copper wire and you pound in a metal stake uh, check up with the check on the details on that anyways you attach the copper wire to a metal stake and basically you pound that into the ground this is the the grounding spot here um, if you're in your house or in your garage I'm going to be using this for example uh, to also power one of my garage door openers so I'm going to ground this to the metal casing of my garage door opener because I know or you know I know it's grounded so I'll be fine that way but for now we'll just leave it just so we can move on to the next segment here okay I'm back here um, just so you know I, I have this battery here and what I do to maintain the battery I have a couple solar panels I think 80 watts in total and that's what those cables are hooked up there so it maintains the battery um, that's like a whole nother video about all the different things that uh, is are going on here but so let's uh, let's just check this thing out here I have it hooked up and we'll test a few items on here there we go so right now on the display it's showing the battery's at 12.8 volts and right now there's no load on it that's what that zero is so let's go ahead and start hooking up some items here well first off before we do that let's just see if this uh, USB is working um, I'll lower this down so you can see my iPad a bit and let's plug him in and it came up and it shows that it's charging so the USB works It'll charge up your iPad, iPhone, whatever. Whatever, any item with a USB. Now let's use the actual iPad charger. Now I, I hooked up a little power bar over here. Might not be able to see it, but it, it's right here. Because there's only two outlets on there, so I put a power bar on there. Anyways, let's plug that in. See what happens here. Okay, again, the iPad lit up, says it's charging and 10 watts go into the system let's unplug that now I also have my big uh, battery for my my weed whacker now this will probably take about 70 or 80 watts I have it plugged into the power bar just zoom out a bit let's see how it works Okay, so it's working on charging, and right away you might have noticed a noise. That is a cooling fan uh, in the inverter. So I think anytime it exceeds a certain amount of wattage, it's going to fire up. Plus, I think this draws a lot of amps, uh, this charging this battery. It's a 40 volt battery. I'm going to plug in an air compressor. It's not a huge air compressor, it's over to the side here. And let's just see how it handles it zoom in a bit here on the power here we go so there you have it um, another item and one last test I decided I have a small hair dryer here it's still charging this battery and I'll try this on low Working good. So it's at about 300, 310 watts. And let's boost this right up. See if it handles it. Okay, so it's putting out a thousand watts now. There you have it. I mean, if you're out in the wilderness camping, this might come in handy. You know, the gal might need to dry her hair. So, there you have it. Hope you have a great day. Oh, and one final thing. I forgot to show you again the uh, 
this is that switch plate I was talking about with all the cord. Now, it's uh, it just plugs in here, and basically, so you can put this in a remote location somewhere convenient if you want to turn off your inverter. Um, there you have it. Right now, it's on, green light, and let's just get this over here. So if I want to turn the power off to the unit, use no switch plate, voila, done. So I think that's pretty neat, uh, should be handy. And there you go, powered it back up, ready to go. I hope you enjoyed the video, I'll make another one, just a generalization one and put a link to this one also. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty happy, looks like it's going to work fine. Have a great day. Like, subscribe. Come back for more.